next we will start with uh, logic and fault simulation. So, this is basically uh, some software tool that has to be designed for checking the for getting confidence about the goodness of uh, this uh, um, module with the test pattern set that we have generated or that we are using for testing some system. So, it will go through this uh, flow first we will have an introduction then the simulation models then logic simulation fault simulation and the concluding remarks. So, logic simulation it predicts the behavior of a design prior to its physical realization. So, what happens is that suppose we have uh, got a uh, circuit to be designed. So, we have uh, we have uh, generated uh, some test pattern set for that and now how do I judge the quality of this test pattern set. One possibility is that once the design has been uh, obtained, once the design has been uh, fabricated, the, if the chip has been manufactured, so we can apply those test patterns and see whether it is detecting some faults that might have crept into the system and crept into the chip and uh, do we get a confidence okay, it is able to detect uh, those failures. So, if it is true that for all the chips that are uh, uh, that are detected uh, by this uh, um, by this process, they are really faulty then uh, we are happy we ca our tool ca our test pattern generator ca could generate test patterns for this purpose or it may so happen that uh, for all the defective chips uh, our tool also our uh, um, uh, um, testing process also tells that they are faulty. So, that is the other uh, other uh, avenue and in which we can say that our test patterns are good, but that is far away and in fact that is after the chip has been manufactured. But can we do something so that before this manufacturing is done, so we can get confidence about the goodness of the test pattern set that we are using. So, this predicts the behavior this logic simulation problem. So, this predicts the behavior of a design prior to its physical realization. So, this is basically the problem of design verification. So, specification is there. So, it uh, goes into manual design or via synthesis. So, it may be manual design or may be by, by synthesis tool. So, it gives the circuit description. When this manual design is going on side by side, it also goes into a test bench development. So, in the test bench development, so it will uh, figure out like what are the uh, uh, for uh, what what may be the possible input patterns that uh, that may be uh, that will be uh, applied to this system and what are their correct responses. So, they are actually forming this input stimuli and expected responses. So, this test bench development process comes up with these two output input stimuli and test bench responses. Now, after this circuit has been synthesized or the circuit so the system has been synthesized. So, we have the circuit description. So, this circuit description we simulate with respect to this input stimuli. So, till now I do not have the actual chip manufactured. So, I have got only the uh, description of it after, uh, after the synthesis has been done. So, the description is simulated with that input stimuli and accordingly we get the simulated response. Now, this simulated response we compare with the expected response and if these two uh, from these two we do a response analysis. Now, if these two responses are not matching that means there is a bug. So, if there is a bug that so we need to correct. So, what do we need to correct? So, we need to correct this design process and uh, uh, that way again this uh, it will go through the modification it will uh, do the synthesis and it will go on like this. However, if there is no bug then of course, we can go to the next design stage that may be the actual implementation of the circuit and all that. But what about the quality of the test bench that we have developed? So, uh, with respect to a given set of test bench, we are getting the confidence that okay, there is no bug in the system, but it is actually the system does not contain any bug which could have been detected by this particular test bench. Only this much is the confidence level. So, to have a better confidence, uh, the test bench development should also be uh, uh, judged. So, they need to be judged like uh, uh, how good or bad is this test bench. So, this fault simulation it predicts the behavior of faulty circuit as a consequence of inevitable fabrication process imperfections. So, it tells like if this particular fault has occurred in the uh, circuit then if you apply this particular pattern. So, you will get this type of output. 
so that is the fault simulation so this is a very important tool for test and diagnosis purpose because uh, it can tell us like uh, uh, what is the fault coverage like if i apply this test pattern set how much is the confidence that my circuit does not have uh, any of those modeled faults as we have said that if there are n lines and we are considering single stuckard fault model then there are two n possible faults out of these two n possible faults how many of them are getting detected by 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 my test pattern set so that may be the type of confidence that gives us so that is the fault coverage and also it gives us some way to do to diagnose the problem like it may so happen that uh, some uh, uh, some test uh, some test has failed in the sense that we applied some pattern to a uh, uh, to a circuit for simulation or at the manufacturing stage so we apply the pattern and we see that uh, the fabricated chip it has failed that test but why has it failed so from the uh, faulty response we should be able to trace back and see where exactly is the fault so that is actually the problem of diagnosis so at the uh, fault simulation you can tell us like if you get this type of uh, behavior then possibly the fault is uh, fault is somewhere here if you get for 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 this pattern so if you get uh, some other response then possibly the fault is somewhere else so that helps us in pinpointing the fault locations or locating the fault so they help us uh, so in estimating the fault coverage this uh, fault simulation it helps us to tell uh, give us the confidence how many faults are come what is the percentage of faults covered then fault simulator like it is uh, simulating the faults like uh, what type of uh, faults we can simulate as a single stackard fault multiple stackard fault bridging fault etc it can also also help us in test compaction because we know that uh, for the one particular fault may be detected by a number of patterns so it may be uh, true that i don't have need to apply all those test patterns for testing a particular fault so can we uh, select a subset of uh, test patterns from a given set so that all faults are covered but we don't apply all the patterns so that is actually the process of compaction so that can be done to reduce the test application time and test data volume and fault diagnosis that we have already discussed so in the manufacturing process if there is some problem then this fault simulation it can tell us like uh, where exactly the fault may be located simulation models the first one is the uh, large gate level network so we can we can think that my circuit is at gate level so it is interconnection of logic gates so like this here we have got this uh, circuit with four gates so that may be Uh, gate level network for sequential circuits so output will depend both on current and past in past values so this may be the model so we have got this uh, primary input primary output uh, pseudo primary input through this uh, yi lines and pseudo primary outputs through this uh, capital y lines okay so this may be the model for the sequential circuit a positive edge trigger d flip flop so it may be uh, the actual circuit may be like this but in uh, in terms of block diagram so we may look at it like this that if the uh, clear line is high clear line is low then this q will become low if this preset line is low then this q will become high so this uh, logic gate circuit actually is modeling that most of the time we will be using uh, these symbols 0 1 u and z so 1 and 0 so they are known from our binary logic so they are true and false of that uh, boolean algebra then u u is unknown at uh, when we are trying to uh, see like what may be the value of uh, some uh, input uh, what will what will be the value of some uh, point in the logic circuit so that may be unknown for example if say uh, if we consider this circuit and all on a sudden we ask what is the value of h without telling explicitly what are the values of a b and c and simulate and uh, 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 trying to figure out the value of l and e so th at that point of time the value of h is unknown okay so that unknown is sometimes used to um, represent that the unknown logic state it may be one or maybe zero and there is another logic state which is z or high impedance so they are not neither connected to vdd nor connected to ground so they are neither one nor zero but u means it is either of them but it is unknown z means it is high impedance but it is not connected to either of them vdd or ground 
in terms of ternary logic so we can define this and or and not functions like say in an and gate two input and gate if one of the input is zero then the output is definitely zero so one of the input being zero output is zero similarly one input being zero output is zero if one input is u then the output depends on the other input so if other input is zero it is u if it is one or u then it is u similarly here also it is like this similarly for the or gate we can uh, make the corresponding uh, logic uh, table okay so uh, zero and u is u one and u is one because whatever be the value of u so it will become one so like that we can do it similarly not zero converts to one one converts to zero but u remains u only now simulation based on ternary logic is pessimistic why a signal value a signal may be reported as unknown when its value can be uniquely determined as 0 or 1. So, here it is uh, say this one say if we follow the this circuit and suppose the value is 1 u and 0. So, this is unknown as a result by the OR logic since this is unknown. So, I have to make it unknown and in this AND gate one input is 1 and another is unknown. So, this is also unknown since this is an inverter and one input is unknown. So, output is also unknown and this uh, NOR gate so that is also unknown. So, if we follow a pure ternary logic based uh, simulation of this circuit then this is the situation that many of the points are remaining unknown. Now, you see that unknown is basically 0 or 1. So, what we can say instead of u if we write 0 or 1. So, at this g 1 I cannot say what it is. So, it is it remains at 0 or 1 that is unknown. Similarly, at this point one of the input is 1. So, whatever it is 0 or 1 so that 0 or 1 comes here. Similarly, at this point 1 or 0 comes. So, if this happens to be 0 then this is 1 and this if this happens to be 1 this is 0. So, from this I can find out that these two values are never same. So, as a result this NOR gate output will always be 0. So, that way uh, we say that the ternary logic uh, simulation is a, is a bit pessimistic but uh, um, accepting that so uh, it helps in many uh, cases where the values of uh, logic uh, different uh, signal lines are not known so doing a simulation at that point of time so you have to go for ternary logic another is the high impedance state so tri state gates they permit several gates to time share a common wire like this so we have got say this uh, g1 g2 g3 so these are all tri state gates so, this if u 1 is high then this x 1 will be coming to the output o 1 and that this o 1, o 2, o 3. So, they are actually connected in, in a fashion. Now, y equal to x i if i equal to 1 and y is z if i equal to 0. So, that is the thing. Now, this whole operation. So, there may be so, this uh, this is connected here. So, and now oh, when more than one of these devices are on more, more than one uh, 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 more than one of these buffers are on. So, what happens at this point? So, that is defined by the resolution function. If all of them are high if all of them are uh, disabled. So, e 1, e 2, e 3 all of them are 0 then we, uh, we may have a pull up or pull down uh, me mechanism by which this bus will be high or low. So, pull up will make it high, pull down will make it low. Then it may be fed to some D flip flop or it may be fed to some other low say uh, combinational element. So, anything can happen. So, it will go like this. So, this uh, the sequential it may go to some other circuit input. Okay. So, this pull up or pull down um, elements may be there. Now, resolution function will tell us like how do you uh, get the logic at this point if multiple drivers are active. So, there are wired or wired and so we have seen many such uh, models. So, any of those models can be uh, followed and it depends on the technology that we are using like what will be the uh, resolution function. So, bus conflict occurs if at least two drivers drive the bus to opposite binary values. So, this is the bus conflict. To simulate this tri state bus behavior, one may insert a resolution function for each bus wire. So, we can say that okay, this wire will be resolved using wired and function, other some other place we may say that okay, this will be resolved using wired or function depending upon the type of implementation that we will finally have. 
So, this uh, simulation it may report only occurrence of bus conflict and uh, they may utilize multi valued logic to represent intermediate logic states as well including logic signal values and strengths. So, that can also be done like we, if we instead of having this uh, two level logic if we have got multi level logic then we can have uh, a simulation with this uh, intermediate uh, logic states. Now, this logic element evaluation method like how do you evaluate a particular logic element by, by for example, a particular logic gate or uh, flip flop like that. So, it depends uh, that the which evaluation technique that we will use it depends on the type of uh, logic symbols the, the, the logic symbol that we are considering and the type of logic elements that we have in our case like if all are uh, um, say logic gates and say uh, and flip flops then maybe we will be following uh, some we, can, we, we may be following some say, simple uh, uh, evaluation strategy like say, uh, say using and or nand nor functions like that. If it is uh, if it is uh, driven by some other bus resolution function at some point of time maybe we have to use that. So, commonly used techniques are this one the truth table based approach input scanning approach input counting approach and parallel gate evaluation approach. So, you will see them one by one truth table based uh, gate evaluation. So, this is the most straightforward and easy way to implement. So, for binary logic we have got 2 power n entries for n input uh, logic element. So, we can check whether uh, a particular uh, logic value has occurred. So, if I have got some n input function then I may have this uh, all 0 to all 1 cases and for each of them I may have these values noted here. So, what is the output there? Now, uh, for a particular, so if this is the logic block for which we are trying to, uh, for which this is the truth table. So, we can uh, check what is the input and try to match with uh, one of them and whichever matches we can take the corresponding value as the output. And in fact, storing this part uh, may not be essential, this input part may not be essential. We can, uh, we can say that okay, uh, as if this is a, this is a table where the I have stored only the output column, only the output column is stored here and this input part. So, this is used as index of the table. So, uh, this is the thing that is uh, for uh, we can have 2 power n entries of n input logic element. Now, we may use input value as table index. So, that can directly be used as table index and then from there we can uh, find out what is the value. But the problem with uh, this uh, um, uh, Boolean uh, table, uh, uh, this uh, truth table based approach is that the table size it increases exponentially with number of inputs. As number of inputs increases, table size also increases significantly. And particularly when we are going for multi valued logic, the situation is becomes worse because if I have got k symbol logic system that will require a table of 2 power m n entries for an n input logic element where m is equal to log of k. So, for binary system, so k is equal to 2. So, our table has got 2 power n entries, but in case of uh, uh, in case of k symbols, if there are k different symbols, then each of these uh, 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 elements they it can take up uh, each of the inputs can take up any of those k values. Okay. So, as a result my truth table size will become 2 power uh, uh, 2 power m n where m is the log of k. So, that way the, uh, the table in table has to be the index of the table has to be m n b toward. So, the it becomes more complex multi valued logic representation in truth table format will be more complex. Another way of uh, looking into this uh, uh, logic evaluation is via input scanning method. So, gate output can be determined by types of inputs. If any of the inputs is the controlling value, the gate output is C x or i and uh, otherwise it is the uh, if any of the inputs is u then the gate output is u otherwise the gate output is C x or i dash uh, C, uh, C prime C, uh, C bar x or i. So, for different types of gate this controlling input and the inversion values are like this for AND gate controlling input is 0 and the inversion value is also 0. That means, if I have got an AND gate to be simulated, 
it has got two inputs. So, to see what is the output, what will be the output of this AND gate, we will see what are the inputs. Now, if this happens to be 0, that means we know that uh, this is uh, this is uh, this has got a controlling value. So, when it has got a controlling value, the, with the output is told to be C x or i, where i is the inversion value. So, inversion value is also 0. So, 0 x or 0, so that is equal to 0. So, whenever this uh, any of the input is equal to 0, output is equal to 0. On the other hand, if this is uh, suppose both the inputs are 1, if both the inputs are 1, in that case, uh, none of them are controlling values. So, as a result it will be uh, coming to this part, it is c bar x or i. So, c bar is 1 x or 0, so that is equal to 1. So, in this way the logic functions uh, can also be captured by means of this c and i values. So, this and or nand nor, so these gates it is it, these are shown, so they are actually capturing the logic symbols, uh, the logic values uh, by means of this controlling and inversion values. So, I do not need to store the truth table. So, for every type of gate I need to store the uh, um, controlling value and the inversion value. From there the uh, by applying these three rules, so we can uh, by applying these uh, three rules we can find out what is the corresponding value. So, the uh, input scanning method the algorithm for evaluation is like this. First this e u input is equal made equal to false that is we have not seen any input which is equal to u. So, then we take the next input. So, if there are if next input uh, does exist then suppose this is equal to v. So, if v is a is the controlling value then we directly return c x or i. If v is not a controlling value then we check whether v is equal to u or not. If v is equal to u, then this u we have seen one unknown value, so that u u in is made equal to true. And if it is not so, then also it checks whether the next input is there or not. So, if any of the input is equal to u, uh, then this u in will become equal to 1. Now, if uh, if we have not seen any controlling value, then what will happen? This input list will exhaust at some point of time. So, it will come out of this no site. Uh, then it will check whether u in is true. So, if u in if none of the inputs are uh, uh, unknown input, then it will go to return c bar x or i. So, that is uh, that is the value. If it is yes, then it will return u. So, it returns three possible values c x or i if it sees a controlling value, it returns c bar x or i if it has not seen any controlling value at the same time it has not seen any u and it returns u if it has seen any of the u in the system in the as the input. So, this way this uh, input scanning method. So, this can uh, compute the values of uh, different logic elements in the circuit. Other approach which is similar to this uh, 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 input scanning method is known as the input counting method. So, what it does it keeps count on the controlling and unknown input. So, c count is the number of controlling input and u count is the number of unknown input. So, it will update counts during the logic simulation. For example, if one input of a NAND gate switches from 0 to u, the c count will be decremented and u count will be incremented. So, that way uh, it is so otherwise the rule remains same for evaluating the uh, gate, uh, so gate output. So, so, the rules that we have here will be applicable in this one also. However, the point is that it does not do a complete uh, simulation. So, it, uh, it what it will do is that suppose uh, this NAND gate was simulated previously, this NAND gate had got a number of inputs. So, uh, it had uh, previously this value was uh, found out to be 1. Now, in this uh, in this method what will happen is that it will see for the next input that is coming to the NAND gate how many changes are there. Like if this uh, it will count how many the, C, uh, the controlling inputs are there, how many uh, unknown inputs are there. So, if there is a change, if there is a change from one pattern, so this is suppose pattern 1, from there the next pattern pattern 2 is applied. So, it will count how many controlling values has changed, how many uh, undefined uh, uh, unknown values have changed. So, that way it will be computing it. So, if it changes from 0 to u, then this modification will be done. So, at the end I by just looking into the c count value, I can see that if the c count value is still greater than 0, that means the output will be uh, c x or i. 
and if I find that it is uh, some of the u count value is uh, more than uh, uh, c count u count value is uh, more than uh, 0 and this controlling input is uh, 0 in that case uh, this output will be u and if it is uh, c count value is uh, 0 and u count value is also 0 in that case output will be that uh, c bar x or i. So, that way the same set of rules will follow, but the uh, effort needed in doing the simulation will be less because each uh, from one pattern to another pattern when we are going, we are just looking into the changes that are occurring in the input set. Another uh, possible evaluation in, uh, to, uh, to speed up this uh, simulation process is by parallel gate evaluation. So, it exploits the inherent concurrency of the host computer. So, a 32 bit computer it can perform 32 logical operations in parallel. So, what, uh, what, what we mean is suppose uh, I have got two operands A and B okay. in a, a, a now this A and B. So, if A is a 32 bit number both of them are 32 bit numbers. Now, if I do a logical ending of A and B so, if I if I do a sorry bitwise ending of A and B, then what will happen? So, if this is my A register, 32 bits are there, and this is the B register, 32 bits are there. Then, when I am doing this bitwise ending, so these two bits will be ended, these two bits will be ended, these two bits will be ended. So, bitwise this ending will be done. So, as a result, it can evaluate 30, 32 different logic operations simultaneously. If provided, of course, the logic operations are similar, then it can do all the 32 operations in a single shot. So, that is uh, what is done here. That okay, suppose so here I have got this uh, assuming that this word size is 4 bit wide. So, a so I have got say the first input says a equal to 1, b equal to 0, c equal to 0, uh, a equal to 1, b equal to 0 and c equal to 0. So, uh, it can evaluate this one, so this and gate, so, so, so first of all this or gate is evaluated this 0, 0, so this is 0 and then this 1 and 0, so that evaluates to 0. Simultaneously, uh, this 0, the second bit is uh, there. So, this one and this one, so they are uh, odd to get this one and then I can uh, do this thing, I can get this uh, odd here and then the ending here. So, it can do 32 logic operations in parallel doing this bitwise operations. Okay. So, that way we can have much faster execution. So, we will continue with the next class.